Good afternoon. My name is Mark Hussey, and it's my privilege to serve as the president of Texas A&M University Kingsville. Over the past week, we've received numerous questions from our students, staff, and faculty with regard to COVID-19. This afternoon, three members of my executive team will be with, meeting with you to answer these questions. I would also like to say that many of the questions that have already been asked by our faculty were addressed last week by our provost in an emergency meeting of the Faculty Senate. We realize that these are challenging times for the students, staff, and faculty, and we look forward to working together as we work our way through this COVID-19 pandemic. Good morning, my name is Alan Rasmussen, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. The questions that came in for the academic affairs that I'd like to address is first, will finals be amended due to most students having to teach themselves material that relied heavily on lecture? What we've asked is for the faculty to work through these issues. This, we realize these are very difficult and we've asked the faculty to be able to deal with their students and their material. They will be the ones that make the decision on how to give the finals. Uh, and we realize, and they realize, that you will be going through this and as well as them. So they will be making that decision. Yeah, one of the questions about how will the exit exams be conducted for seniors. Uh, there's two different types of exit exams based on the program. One of them is just your final and those finals will be conducted by the faculty and they will be done as we've done in the past. Those grades will be due May 18th and we will certify who passed and who didn't pass on May 20th. So that'll be handled the same. If you're doing an exit exam which actually is a interview, then that you need to contact that program to make sure that they uh, will be conducting that with you. Most likely that will be done via Collaborate so that they actually can see you face to face, but we wanna minimize those social contacts again so we can do that just like we're doing advising where it's going to be online. The next question is, uh, will we be able to waive the due dates for work online and let people finish the course at their own pace? What we, I would ask on each one of these is please work with your faculty uh, on these. If you've got difficulties at home, then we do have the opportunity to use the I contract or get an incomplete in the course. That allows you to finish the course over a one year period. But what we ask when we have any kind of situations like this is that you work with the faculty so that they would be able to say, here's what you need to do to complete this course. And again, please work with the faculty on these kind of situations. We realize everyone has different uh, situations uh, as they try and work through the COVID-19 issues. Will summer classes also be moved online? At this time, we are putting the summer courses online. Uh, when we get to May 1st, if we get different guidance from uh, the federal government on how we're looking at social distancing, we will be able to look at some of these courses and we may be able to bring some face to face. But at this time, they are online. I would anticipate if things change, we might look at the second summer term, might be able to go uh, a few courses face to face if that's possible. The next question was that they're in a current class that has a project uh, that requires students to be, if they're in a project that requires to get an incomplete and that course is taught for a 10 week session in the summer, would, that be, would they be allowed to take that? At this time, since we are looking at our summer courses to be faced uh, online, that doesn't give us an option for that course on that 10 week period. So that is actually not something we can address today. There might be something uh, that might be looked at, but at this time, that's not something we're able to do in the summer. What recourse will a student have if they legitimately do not have access to the internet or a computer during this period? What I would ask is that you work with the faculty. Uh, if they're, again, this is the same situation as if that you do not have access, can we work with you to, uh, for an eye contract so that you can do that once you come back uh, to campus? 
that's the only thing I can look at now. I will tell you, some of our faculty have started working with students who don't have access to a computer where they're actually sending assignments via the phone and then the students are taking pictures and of that and then sending it back to the faculty. So work with the faculty to see what is going to be happening on uh, that particular course. Again, every course will be slightly different and we realize everybody's having to go through a lot of change at this time. How will the different uh, situations, uh, the current situations affect dual credit classes for high school students? Our dual credit courses are being delivered online. If you are one of the students that were taking the course on campus, then that is being delivered online. If you were one of the students in, uh, that was taking the class at your local high school, we are also delivering those courses online. We realize we've had some problems contacting the students because they're not looking at their A&M Kingsville uh, email. We've reached out to the counselors in each one of those schools and we're trying to get those counselors to reach to the students so that we can work with those students. Again, if you're not getting contact, please ch uh, check with your counselor if you're at one of those schools. If you're at one of the ones here on Kingsville, please contact your faculty member. The next is, uh, will Texas A&M uh, Kingsville uh, do a pass-fail system for online courses as they have greatly affected a student's uh, GPA. What we're looking at right now is we've looked at several different options that different schools are trying to implement. We have asked our faculty senate to be able to provide us a recommendation to see what they think we can do. At this time we're looking at all the different options we have to try and make the greatest benefit to our students. It's not an easy conversion, and there are a lot of different things every student's going to have to look at. So we're looking at several options right now, but I will advise everyone that's looking at this, please make sure you check with an advisor to see how that might affect you as you go forward. The next question is, why are professors not responding to students' emails? I can't answer that question. I know all of our faculty are going through all the same kind of difficulties that our students are going through. But I would say if you are not getting contacted by your faculty, what I would request each one of you to do is on the next email, copy their department chair. We need to make sure we know who's not uh, uh, contacting their students and why. So if you're not re receiving any correspondence from your faculty, Make sure you copy the chair so that we can address that. Governor Abbott announced an executive order that would limit social gatherings, which is effective until April 30th. The a and Kingsville Mark Cisneros Center for Young Children uh, was looking at reopening on April 1st. Are we going to delay that? At this point, uh, Governor Abbott did exempt daycares, but at a and Kingsville, we have uh, now made the decision to close the uh, daycare center until at least May 1st, and then we will reassess what we will do as far as reopening the daycare center at that time, or if we have to leave it uh, shut. So at this point, uh, it is not going to be opened until May 1st. There's another question that has come up, and that is if we would be able to waive the W uh, that uh, if someone withdraws. At this point, we've been given the authority that the W can be waived, so this does not count towards the six drop rule uh, that has been implemented by the state. Hi, I'm Maureen Croft. I'm the Vice President for Enrollment Management at Texas A&M Kingsville. My first question is, when will the fall 2020 admit decision start? I think it's important to distinguish between application dates and decision time dates. Applications for fall 2020 admissions open July 1st, 2019 for undergraduate students and September 1st, 2019 for graduate students. Applications will remain open until the first day of class for the fall 2020 semester, which is August 24th, 2020 for undergraduate applicants, July 1st, 2020 for domestic graduate applicants and June 1st, 2020 for international domestic applicants. However, please check our website for application deadlines as we are currently looking into extending them for graduate applicants. We routinely contact students with missing documents to let them know what must be submitted for their application to be complete. 
If you're applying for admission as an undergraduate first time in college freshman, you'll receive an admission decision within a day or two of completing your application if you meet the required requirements for assured admission. Students transferring from another institution of higher education to TAMUK at the undergraduate level must have a transfer GPA of 2.0 or better to be admitted to the university. Decisions for transfer students are made within one or two days of having a complete application. Applicants to graduate programs are reviewed by faculty engaged in teaching and research in the department of interest to the applicant. Sometimes these decisions may take a little longer. We encourage anyone with questions about their admission status to contact us for further information. We're here to help. The second question I have, is there any chance of cancellation of summer fall intake? If not, is it safer for international students to travel and to attend college? Texas A&M University Kingsville is open and we're open and we continue to provide the same quality programs and individualized instruction that we always have. We're encouraging uh, students to apply and we are accepting applications and do not anticipate ever not accepting applications. We strongly suggest that international applicants follow the guidance put forth by their home country and the U.S. State Department in consultation with family, friends, and mentors at home when making a decision about whether to travel abroad for collegiate studies. The next question I have is how will testing and taking exams set, such as proctored MAT exams be modified or what adjustment will be made for new students without having to travel to Kingsville or, or be taken due to, to health concerns due to the coronavirus. Also, can admissions exams such as MAT be postponed until coronavirus completely clears up, even if that is 2021 and not put students at risk or will TAMOC offer other online form to take these exams such as using programs like ProctorU? <clears throat> which it enables students to take their proctored exams at home. Thank you for your question. You're, uh, I'm glad you asked it and we're glad that you're applying to the uh, MBA program in the College of Business and Administration. Your question also gives me an opportunity to address some other specific uh, concerns involving testing. First, the College of Business and Administration at Texas A&M Kingsville accepts scores from the GMAT, which is a Graduate Management Admissions Test, the GRE, which is a Graduate Record Exam. The college does not currently accept scores from the MAT, the Management Aptitude Test for Admissions Decisions. GRE, t GRE tests are able to be administered through ProctorU, and, which is an at-home option to take the GRE. The service cost $35. We encourage students applying to other graduate programs at the university who have not taken the GRE to consider the at-home option through the educational testing service. And as always, we encourage anyone with questions about tests um, that are required for admission to contact us. Hello, I'm Jacob Flournoy, the Vice President for Finance and Chief Financial Officer. I've been asked a series of questions um, three from the students that we've summarized into three categories and then one from the employees. I'd like to address the three student questions together because they cover a similar topic. And then I'll address the question from the employees. Every decision the university has made has fa focused first on the safety and health of our students. The university remains open to all students and classes have been moved online. We are offering all essential services to assist the students in completing their educational studies online and in a safe and healthy environment. While the dorms remain open, we have issued prorated credits to the students who chose to move out of the dorms related to their housing and meal plans. The credits will be applied first to any balance owed in the current spring semester and then to the next subsequent semester's charges. Based on any balances currently owed, graduating seniors and non-returning students who finish the spring semester online may be eligible for a refund. If applicable, these refunds will be issued after the semester ends on May 15, 2020. The Student Health Clinic remains open and is available to all students. The decision to close the student rec was made in response to a national health emergency declaration from the President of the United States that protects our students' employees by implementing social distancing. The student rec is being maintained in good condition and is ready to open when determined safe to do so. 
We appreciate everyone's patience and cooperation with the public health directives that will hasten our return to normal operations. We're not planning to issue refunds of these fees for the spring 2020 semester. The university does offer a wide range of student financial aid and financial aid counselors are available to address individual situations. The question from the employees was, who are considered essential employees? It seems as if the information hasn't been clarified. Staff across campus are confused as to who specifically can work remotely. Does every department need an employee to be present in the office? The university has been deemed an essential operation during the COVID-19 pandemic and has been allowed to remain open to serve its student population. All employees are considered essential. However, the vice presidents were tasked to identify essential services that must be performed in accordance with the university's business continuity plans and which of those services could be provided at an alternate location. Certain essential services can only be provided on campus. Supervisors have been asked to develop staffing levels to ensure those services are staffed as needed to carry out the university's mission to its students. Does every employee department need an employee to be on present? And the answer is no. Uh, that's a decision we make uh, to ensure that the safety of our employees just as we're ensuring the safety of our students. In closing, I would like to remind you to continue to practice social distancing and good personal hygiene. Please continue to send us your questions and concerns and to frequently check our COVID-19 page on the university website for frequent updates. Stay safe, Havelinas.